All right, so a lot of you guys would really enjoy camping alone. The issue is, is there's a lot of anxiety and fear that comes with it. And to be honest, I camp alone a lot more than I camp with other people. But it took a lot for me to get to this point where I could sleep through the night and enjoy myself while I'm out here. And a lot of that has to do with these five secrets that I'm about to share with you. Uh, at the end of this video, hopefully, I can give you the confidence and the preparation to come out here and really enjoy nature. When you're out here all alone and you can enjoy the peace and the quiet and the relaxation, it's so rewarding. And hopefully, I can give that to you by the end of this video. So let's just get started. All right, so tip number one is to always camp near your vehicle. Uh, when you're first getting started, you're going to want to pack a lot of stuff. And that's perfectly fine uh, because you're going to be storing it in your vehicle. You're not going to be carrying it on your back. You're not going to have to carry it over distance. So if you want to bring those five sets of clothes, go for it. If you want to bring a big cooler and a big tub full of food, go for it, you know. Uh, especially if you're alone. That means that there's nobody else's stuff in your vehicle. There's nobody else. You can fill up your passenger seat, your back seat, your trunk. Uh, you can go ahead and fill that thing up. And it allows you to carry everything you need to be comfortable in the woods. Uh, even if you don't use it, you're going to learn. You're going to learn the stuff that you never use. And you're going to learn to keep it at home. And eventually you're kit and your packs are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller but when you're first getting started load this thing up it's going to carry all your stuff so you might as well fill it and be as comfortable as possible uh, the other advantage to having your vehicle real close by is it provides a lot of comforts like heat and air conditioning uh, i like to sit in my jeep sometimes just to get away from the bugs if the mosquitoes are really thick and i'm getting eaten alive uh, I'll just sit in my Jeep, take a five minute break from the bugs, get my mind back in the game, and then come out and enjoy the rest of my trip. And uh, it's just a nice little shelter with hard sides. If you're scared, you can go in it. Uh, if you're anxious, just whatever, there's a lot of comforts inside of your vehicle. So it's a really good idea to keep it close at hand. So let's get into tip number two. All right, so tip number two, is to practice setting up your gear, uh, especially your tent. Now, there's a lot of tents that are really easy to set up with two people, uh, like really easy. And then you go to set them up with just by yourself and you're trying to feed the poles through the sleeves or you're trying to do different things, setting up the poles a certain way and doing it by yourself is just infinitely times harder. Uh, it's nearly impossible to do by yourself and so it's important that you set this up even if it's just in your living room or your backyard uh, make sure that you set it up and take it down by yourself so that you know that you're capable of doing it because the last thing you want to do is get all the way out here and realize that you can't set up your tent by yourself you need that other person to hold the other side of the pole or to help you run the pole through the sleeve so uh, make sure that you test out your gear especially your tent. All right, so tip number three is to rely less on your skill and more on your gear. You wanna have reliable gear that's gonna get you through the night without fire, without anything. You wanna have gear that you can count on and that will get the job done and regardless of your skill set. And so instead of planning on a fire to keep you warm, plan on bringing a jacket to keep you warm because plans change, weather changes, and it's important that you have what you need when you need it, okay? If you're really good at using a ferro rod and all of a sudden it starts pouring down the rain, uh, you might not be able to get a fire started and you might freeze. And so it's important to have a warm sleeping bag, uh, especially if you think that the temperature is gonna be decent, you don't think it's gonna drop down that cold, always bring a warm sleeping bag. Always plan for it to drop down. I go 10 degrees. So like tonight it's supposed to be 48 degrees. I'm planning on it being 38 degrees. And so I have a 20 degree bag 
uh, that keeps me warm well at freezing at 32 degrees. And so uh, I always take 10 degrees off. I can always open this thing up, vent it, uh, do whatever I have to do to keep cool. But once you're cold, there's not much you can do to warm back up. And so I have my X-Therm, which is a very warm sleeping pad. Uh, I have a canister stove because I'm not going to rely on my fire, especially when you're first getting started. You don't want to rely on your skills to get the job done. You want the gear to do it for you. Uh, I'm going to do a video here shortly on the difference between canister stoves and alcohol stoves, especially when you're just getting started. So you might want to stay tuned and check that out. But uh, moving on here, bring a lighter. I like to start fires with ferro rod. I know a lot of people like to use a ferro rod to start a fire, but I always bring a lighter because like I said, sometimes the conditions or the plans change. Uh, the weather, it's not cooperating. My ferro rod's not working the way I'm used to it working. Bad things can happen. So having a lighter, a tried and true lighter can get you out of a lot of sticky situations. And so make sure that you have a lighter that you trust. Uh, I have a water filter here. Uh, make sure, a lot of people like to boil water. I like to filter it. But if you're not comfortable or confident in filtering water, maybe you just want to bring a big jug of water so you know you have clean water. You want to know you have what you need before you need it. Uh, that's a big thing, especially when you're have your vehicle with you. If you have your vehicle with you, it doesn't matter how heavy it is. It doesn't matter how big or bulky it is. If you want to bring a big 10 gallon jug of water to make sure that you have what you need to keep hydrated, to cook with, to bathe in, whatever it is you want to do, bring it. Don't be scared to bring more than you need, especially when you're first getting started. And make sure that your gear is tested and you rely on it and that you know that it's going to perform the way it's supposed to without having to depend on your skills. All right, so tip number four is to bring a comfortable chair, uh, bring a lot of comfort items. You're gonna be out here, you're gonna be enjoying the views, you're gonna be enjoying the sounds, you're gonna be enjoying the freedom of being out here and not having any responsibilities, not having a care in the world. And uh, being as comfortable as possible really helps you enjoy that experience. Something that you have to keep in mind is there's nobody out here keeping you company. Uh, there's nobody to talk to. There's nobody to tell stories to. There's no one to interact with. So everything you do is gonna be solo. Uh, so whether you're gonna be playing uh, solitaire card games or just sitting and enjoying the piece, uh, make sure that you bring what's gonna make that as comfortable as possible because being comfortable is essentially what's gonna make you enjoy the experience and uh, make you wanna to continue to come out and do it again and again and again and uh, practice skills and evolve your systems. And so being as comfortable as possible in the beginning will show you the things that you care most about and the things you're not willing to live without. So take advantage early on on bringing as many comfort items as possible. All right, so tip five is just pack it up and go home. Uh, there's no point in staying if you're not enjoying yourself. I've gone home because I've forgotten gear, uh, because I've been bored, because I just a storm was coming and I wasn't ready for it. There's no shame in just packing up and going home. But only without your camera gear.